Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to a new video. Thanks to the rise of computers and computing power, CFD is one of the fastest rising fields in computational engineering. CFD helps the engineers to pair mathematical or a numerical model with the computer and then solve it. The same procedure can be done experimentally, but it would take up a lot of money. Hence, CFD was brought into the picture as a means to study fluid flow while saving time, money and resources. So what exactly is CFD? The fundamental idea of CFD is to solve Navier-Stokes equations computationally. The Navier-Stokes equations define many single phase fluid flows. They can also be modified to define viscous, supersonic and subsonic flows. But the Navier-Stokes equations are partial differential equations and a computer cannot solve these equations directly. Hence, we will use a method called discretization to convert the PDEs to a form that the computers can understand. So let's see how discretization works. Consider the picture of an aeroplane here. When we discretize a system, we break it into smaller elements. In this analogy, we can say that the smaller elements are like pixels. After breaking them into smaller elements, the governing equations are solved in each and every element. Now, if you pixelate this image with large pixels, it will appear unresolved and blurry. But if you use a smaller pixel, it will appear with clearer resolution. The same goes on for discretization. If you discretize a system with larger structures, the solution will be far from accurate. But the smaller the size of the elements, the more accurate the solution will be. The disadvantage here is that when the size of the element gets smaller, the number of elements in the geometry increases. Well, as the number of elements increase, the simulation time will also increase, which is not desirable. The process of discretizing a system is also called as meshing. It is performed in the pre-processing stage of a simulation. Also, when we mesh a geometry, the elements need not necessarily be square or quad elements. They can be triangular, polyhedral or tetrahedral shapes. The choice of mesh elements depends upon the simulation that we are running. When we mesh a simple structure like a pipe or a block of metal, the process is relatively easy. But as the geometry becomes complex, meshing becomes harder. An engineer must possess strong foundation mathematics and programming to create their own mesh generation tool. Now, in order to get into meshing, you need strong understanding of application tools like ANSA and HyperMesh, and you should also understand the physics of the problem for which you are creating the mesh. All right, with that, I would like to conclude this video. We have two amazing courses on ANSA and HyperMesh, and I'm pretty sure you would like it. Thank you, bye.